And as you might imagine, kitty rescue is by far one of the most annoying events because people have to match these kunai to save a cat inside an ice cube. And of course, naturally, if you hit it like that, you have to start over, right? It's pretty rage induced. So, you know, you can try to double tap, you can try to triple tap, and so on and so on, right? But everyone's really got to ask the question, why exactly is it that we're throwing kunai at, a, at an ice cube? Like, there, there are better ways to do this. Why are we, why are we doing this? <laughs> like, did anyone ever start to really question, like, it, should this person al be allowed to have a cat? Because this is kind of like, I, I don't know, morally, ethically questionable, you know, like, I, I, I don't know, man. I, I don't know. Just hear me out here, okay? And of course, yes, you can wait as long as you possibly need so that you can get, you know, past the stages, so to speak, right? And, of course, every stage is going to give you some speed-ups and some loot. So, obviously, you know, if you're not doing them, you need to do them, you know? But, like, I, I, I sympathize with the people that quite genuinely don't understand why exactly this is a thing. <laughs> you know? And it's like, whoa. You know, oh, wow. That was, like, really crazy. That was actually crazy. Um, but, anyway, I mean, it's just... I don't know, you know? Like, I... Wow, I am, like, getting really good at that. Um, <laughs> you know, but, I mean, just for what it's worth, no! Uh, I, I don't know, you know, it's like, Kitty Rescue is kind of in, in, in its own place, right? Now, of course, we're all up. Nah, we, we got Frost Punch. Obviously, my recommendation is always going to be just to fill the daily chest and then save your sandwiches. And the reason for this is because once you get to the last day, then you want to burn all of them. And it's, you know, a good opportunity to basically spend and get all those wonderful loot pieces at the end, right? Um, of course, you want to be ranking in King of Treasure as much as you can. You know, I'm not too, uh, how do you say, unless you spend a stupid amount, right, you're not going to get to rank one. So don't try and get to rank one. <laughs> I'm just going to hate to say it, but like, be realistic, you know, like, don't, don't give yourself, don't set yourself up to fail. Okay, like, now, of course, you know, here, I just have to do some stamina and some polar terrors. Easy peasy. Three days. If we can do that, no problem. Um, but, you know, if anything... You know, you guys have probably seen the, the penguin. And so that's kind of got its own place. Um, of course, you know, with the supply station, um, you basically just got to defeat beasts, um, gather resources, use speed-ups to get sandwiches. You know, so it's relatively straightforward. Um, but, you know, like anything, uh, there, there are a couple of things that kind of jump out to people, which is the dynamo pack. Um, whether or not should you, you know, spend your way through that versus... You know, even now people may have seen the Ferris wheel pack and they're going, oh, what the heck do I make of this? You know, is this worth it? <laughs> and the question is always going to be, is it or isn't it, right? But uh, the answer is always really, how much are you willing to spend? Because in this game, you, you can spend to your heart's content. I, I would say most, if not everybody, including people like myself, right? Are, uh, we're not, we're not going to dump like two grand into this game. That's just not going to, that's not how we fly, right? So what we're going to do instead is we're going to play play it smart. And if you want to play it smart, what you need to do is really just kind of pick out what heroes you are going to work on. Okay? And you always want to think in terms of what is going in the future, right? And then you've also got to want to work on your gear. So, again, I've always stressed having one set of gear for each type because right, it's really, really quite easy if you do it that way. Now, of course, you can see all the upgrades just from going up from one level okay but even then i don't like burning these right away same thing with mastery forge you know like i can go ahead and master forge here i'll get 50 percent of it back and there's gonna be a little you know a little jump in stats there but again like anything you don't want to just burn it willy-nilly you know you you want to kind of make use of it as the event is going on that's how you can really find yourself getting the most amount of loot. If anything, though, you got to get through the stages. So you got to get to 24 in order to get some of those hero shards. And again, anytime or every time you can get some shards is totally worth it. Um, now, as you might imagine, I am stupid close to where I can get to VIP 12. So I could conceivably dump all my gems into VIP. But because I plan on going to get whatever the hero wheel option is going to be for gen 5 i'm saving the gems for that um of course canyon clash is coming up 
couple of tips uh, regarding this, and especially for anybody that is new to this, okay, is that basically you can either go hard left or go hard right. One thing will remain the same. As things unlock, you're basically going to have, like, at max, like, you're going to have basically a certain number of players in your alliance that are going to need to be dedicated roles. In other words, I would say pick three captains. One captain for left flank, one captain for right flank, and one captain for the middle flank. Okay? And I say this because you're going to have a lot of push and pull. So if you've got, in our case, say 40 people, divide 40 by three people. <laughs> and then I have those three people, you know, out of the, you know, so in my case, I have 35, right? 35 divided by three. Devote two other people as captains and then kind of distinguish where your directions are going to go from there. Now, and I, I say this as somebody that, you know, whenever you go into a battle of Canyon Clash, I will say that one thing you'll get to do is, you know, you get to pick whether or not you get to deploy, whether or not you want to apply. You can change what time, it, you know, when you register and all that jazz. But one thing that, that absolutely stands out to me is one of the more important things to uh, really kind of, if, if anything, it strikes me as something that helps a lot is to kind of think in terms of having one march that is for attacking, one march for defending, and one march that is a mixed march. Now, if you don't know what I mean by this, I'm saying basically you need to have at least 50% of your army needs to always be infantry, regardless of which one you mix with. But what I'm saying is, you know, add 30% Lancer in one march for defense and one march of 30% of marksmen for attack. And then put attack heroes on the, you know, attack march, put defense heroes on the defense march, and then your mix march can be whatever mixture of good, decent heroes you have left in your, you know, your uh, roster, right? And ideally, by doing that, you're going to find yourself doing really well. Now, it's not going to help you against whales. Whales will absolutely blow through the competition in Kenya Clash, okay? Like, you run into a group of whales, and you're pretty much screwed. Like, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a slam dunk. <laughs> so you kind of, in order to really succeed in Canyon Clash, it's it's both a combination of having whales, but also having like very well placed whales, you know. And 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 I say that because you know one of the ways that Storm Rage, in our case, when we were playing Ice Guard, got a really good advantage is they basically went full full throttle and hit Flame Guard, knocked Flame Guard completely out, and then they circumvented and basically held Flame Guard to their wits end, which gave them a lot of extra points, and then they actually started um, letting Flame Guard trickle in our right flank while we're trying to you know, hold back Storm Rage from pushing into our flank. And so, in essence, you know, whenever you're doing Canyon Clash, you always want to be reactionary, and you also need to be on an offense, you know? If, if you are to succeed in Canyon Clash, the best defense is the best offense. <laughs> And ultimately, I think if, if you strive to have, you know, two of your armies split going in one direction, say, like, if you have a single whale, right, that has really decent stats in all three marches, the guy that sends all three in the same place is going to be divided, you know, in only one direction, right? But if you split his armies in three different directions, his attention is going to be split in three different directions. And the best players that I saw, what they did is they condensed their marches into three you know, distinct locations, but they were all within the same general area. So, like, if, if for example, whales are going to go to the left flank, then, yeah, they're going to hit maybe three different buildings in that left flank, but they're all in the same general area. They're not trying to focus on the left, the top, and the middle all at the same time. That's just my two cents for Canyon Clash. Um, but, again, I hope you guys are looking forward to it as much as I am, and I'll see you guys next time.